My name is Teddy Wong, and I was born in Fargo, North Dakota, February the 7th, 1924. And we, all together, we had 10 grandchildren. Right, that's important. <laughs> We see so little of them because they were working like 16 hours, 24/7, and maybe even more. And he, he never comes home till real late at night, sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning, around when it was around eight. I hear that my dad had a. Um, an illness that's um, you know he's going to die so he made up his mind that like all most of the Chinese here in the United States then they wanted to take all their kids back to China uh, <coughs> instead of having them interact with the American culture in the United States that's what he decided to do uh, at that time, and this is 1932, right in the middle of the Depression, as we later learned, and he took us all back, all six of us back to China, and one still in the womb. I think my dad died three months after he took us back to China. And, and then finally, uh, pretty soon my uncle couldn't make it in the, in the rest of the inn. So I had to move over to my to my dad's partner's restaurant, and they says, "Oh, fine, come on over and and well, living's a little bit better. At least you know the floor wasn't dirt, and and the restaurant's busier. They had more business, and they were able to keep you know, the restaurant open. And then when the war started, the business started getting pretty good, and I got up. And my English improved a lot, and I got up to." Um, high school and then pretty soon I um, was got up to halfway through my junior year. Then I get one day I got a letter. It says uh, I used a yellow page, it says greeting uh, you are to report so and so at this time to the <laughs> Local draft board. Went, we ended, we are delivered to Fort Snelling and into the army. And you know, I, I had the best suit of clothes I ever had. <laughs> they sent me out to Fort Ord, California, and, uh, for basic training. And I ended up in the army in the Sixth Armored Division, and Sixty Eighth Armored Regiment. And we had tank, trained for tank warfare. Spun off from the 6th Armored Division and formed what they call amphibious tanks. And I was in a 773rd amphibious tank battalion. And then we were shipped over to Hawaii and we trained, continually trained right on the foothills of Cocoa Head. And at that time we'd been on many, many ships, LSTs, scheduled for a campaign in the Marianas and we we trained with the Marines and we had to go over to Maui and pick up elements of the 4th Division, 24th Marines, and we were supposed to be setting out for, for Saipan, Tinan, and Guam, which we didn't know until we got in the ship. All of a sudden, something happened, you sabotage, or somebody wasn't careful, and six of our ships all blew up with all the ammunition, everything else in it, personnel of it all. I think they called it the Second Pearl Harbor, but the Navy really never publicized it. They had inquiries, but finally, finally, at the height of the conflagration, orders came down that every man for yourself. The casualty in the Second Pearl Harbor, by the way, is like almost 160 people killed and about five times that many wounded. We only lost one man in our company. That it was a captain of Company B, and the invasion went off without a, a hitch. And looking at that island. You know, like it's not, nothing's happening. It's so the navy is pounding it like 
with all these ships and all these shells are, you can see them in the air. You can see a battle, big battleship shell, a shell of 2,000 pounds sailing through the air, and, a, and you can hear it like a freight train. And we were supposed to hit Yellow Beach too, and our tanks are painted with two yellow stripes on it. 11,000 guys dead on that one. Even to the end, even the, the commander, General Buckner, got killed. Of course, the Japanese probably lost 100,000. So many people laying dead. And, huh, I don't want to talk about that. And uh, it was war. Back in the United States, and, um, and I was discharged at Camp Selway about exactly three years. And then uh, I went back in, to the Far Cafe, and I, I told the, guy, the head guy, I said, hey, you know, I don't have a job now. I says, I'd like to take my dad's share back and start working. And the, it was so congenial. The guy says, fine, just go back there and ask the guy what they want you to do back in the kitchen. It's, um, we took advantage of the provision for GI's, GI bride. It was the uh, easiest immigration you can never think of it. There's, there's nothing to it. You just write down your serial number and throw in the discharge papers as you can go. You're in. <laughs> no formality. Nothing. It was that simple. In 1948, you know, we opened our home, we worked all out, and had our first child right over there, sitting next to her in 1953. And um, I went to work pretty soon for a guy, and he, that was in 1956, and he brought us out there to the Twin Cities, and I worked for him for two years, and I found this spot here, and it was where Caribou Coffee is up there right now. <laughs> My 10 grandchildren, Renee has three, and the next daughter is Doreen, and she's working in Connecticut as an anesthetist nurse. Doreen doesn't have any children because Junior, yeah, three. Junior, Junior has three boys. Yeah, Teddy Junior. Teddy Junior. And John has, has four children, three boys and a girl. Nineteen to four. He come back and work, work, work for us, and then uh, yeah. he, he he went out and work for. Well, I made him a I made him a kind of a some wholesale. I made him wholesale. a partner here for a while. Then I gave him the restaurant. And they worked it for seven years, and they decided they want to do something else or not do anything else and sold it to the employees. Somewhere in the early 60s, we move over here. And we've ever been, we've been here until, I worked here for 43 years. And one day I just decided to donate the restaurant to my children, two of them, John and Renee. And they worked it, I think, for about seven years, finally, Last year, about this time, they sold it to the employees. She's by profession a pharmacist. <laughs> I had a, a friend here, his name is Harry Wong, and they tried to raise funds to, to build a new school, not to build it, but to replace the old structure they have there. And Harry is kind of like a go between, and he came to me, and I finally agreed that I'm going to. I agreed to give him $125,000. And that got her going, but there's a lot of other people that donated money in there too, but, but I was a principal. And that built that school, Shell Hin. A long time ago, our great-grandfather traveled all the way across the Pacific to America. The voyage was very dangerous but he finally came to land in San Francisco at Angel Island. He took the train all the way to Fargo, North Dakota, where he started a restaurant with many other people. 